Over the past decade, the crypto universe has exploded. In 2009, Bitcoin was like the Big Bang, leading to all these different galaxies of crypto projects. And all of them are made possible by one game-changing innovation that you've probably heard of, the blockchain. It's the key mechanism behind how a cryptocurrency actually works. And it has game-changing applications even well beyond the world of finance. But it can be difficult to wrap your head around the blockchain, right? At least it was for me. What exactly is the blockchain? How does it work? Is it a chain of blocks? Like what? And what's all the hype about? We're gonna break all that down in this video. And we'll start by going back to the Big Bang, so to speak, to 2009 with the creation of Bitcoin. Before we do that, just stop for a sec. This is part of a series of crypto explainers, the crypto fundamentals. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, you might wanna check out our intro video, what is a cryptocurrency? But if you already understand that, or if you've already watched it, let's get back to this. What is the blockchain? Right, so it's 2009 and Satoshi Nakamoto, that's the mysterious pseudonymous figure behind Bitcoin. He's up against a really big challenge that several people had failed before him. He was trying to make digital money and he had a prototype, but he was going about it in a new way. He wanted to create a currency without any centralized authority pulling the strings. No banks, no government oversight, no trust in third parties. Instead, his new currency would be peer to peer, by the people, for the people. But that presented a big challenge. Banks and governments play important roles in traditional finance. So he needed a system that could do what banks do, print new Bitcoins, facilitate and verify transactions, keep track of balances, prevent fraud, all that stuff, but in a decentralized way. That meant distributing those responsibilities evenly among the users of his new currency, with nobody in charge. But leaderless groups are prone to disagreement. Satoshi knew that he needed a foolproof system that would get the users to cooperate and agree with each other, or else the whole thing would fall apart. His solution was the blockchain, you guessed it. And it's really quite ingenious. The simplest way to think about the blockchain is as a very long list of transactions. To take it a bit further, it's an indisputable history of every single time a cryptocurrency has changed hands. Instead of being run by a bank or government, the blockchain is managed by its users. Any user at all can install some software in their computer and participate as a node in the network. In fact, I'll actually do it right now. I'll install some software on my computer and I'll turn my computer into a node. I'm at the Bitcoin website, bitcoin.org. Uh, I'm gonna go to download Bitcoin Core. That's the name of the Bitcoin software, but every cryptocurrency will have their own version of this. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to install the open source Bitcoin software on my computer and run a node. And it's going to download the entire blockchain all the way back to 2009 in the background. And that'll take a while because the entire Bitcoin blockchain is currently about 420 gigabytes. So we'll see where it's at by the end of this video. And just like my computer is doing, each node keeps and updates their own identical copy of the blockchain. Once my computer's finished downloading the blockchain, it'll start communicating and cooperating with all of the other nodes on the network following a set of hard-coded rules baked into the blockchain that make sure that my copy never differs from anybody else's. With the blockchain, consensus is key. So let's say you wanna send somebody some Bitcoin. First, that transaction gets broadcast out to the network of nodes. They check the history of transactions to make sure that you have sufficient funds. And if you do, your transaction gets passed along and added to a kind of waiting list. It's now a pending transaction. From there, some other special nodes take those pending transactions and start assembling them into chunks of a limited size called blocks. These are just digital files. Every 10 minutes or so, one of those nodes gets to add their block of transactions to the list, linking it to the previous block and extending the virtual chain. Exactly which node gets to add their block is decided by a kind of computational lottery that these nodes race each other to win. With Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies, that process is called proof of work. It's a bit complex, so don't worry about exactly how this works right now. We'll save the details of proof of work for another video. 
Now, once a node wins that lottery, they propose their block to the network. If everybody agrees that it's legitimate and that there's no funny business going on, then all the nodes on the network copy that block down and the process repeats for the next block. This is how the blockchain grows and how transactions are recorded and verified. And one more thing, whoever wins that computational lottery and gets to add their block to the chain is rewarded with newly minted Bitcoins or whatever cryptocurrency we're talking about. That's their incentive and why this process is called mining. It's also how new digital coins are printed. They're drip fed into the digital economy as the blockchain grows. Side note here, Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies have a limit to the number of coins that will ever be minted. Bitcoin's magic number is 21 million and over 19 million coins have already been mined. This cap on the number of coins imposes a kind of artificial scarcity, which is supposed to increase the cryptocurrency's value over time. So that's the gist of how the blockchain works. But you might be wondering, how can the blockchain be trusted? Aren't cryptocurrencies just shifting trust from people and institutions to a technology? Well, yes, but the blockchain has some clever and sophisticated security features that make it trustworthy. Let's dig a bit deeper. First of all, the blockchain is highly resilient to fraud. Perhaps the most important feature of the blockchain is its immutability, meaning that once a transaction is recorded, it's virtually impossible to change it. A big reason why is that the majority of the network always needs to agree on the state of the blockchain. So to make a change, you need to convince a majority of the nodes that your doctored blockchain is the true one. And to do this, you need to crack the blockchain's legendary defense mechanism, the cryptographic proof. In order to achieve consensus on the state of the blockchain, the network relies on a sophisticated verification mechanism rooted in cryptography. This is why it's called a cryptocurrency. Put very simply, the process imposes a cost on anybody who wants to edit or add to the blockchain. There are several ways of doing this. Most cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, use what's called proof of work, which requires the use of energy and expensive computers to edit the blockchain. That's that computational lottery we were talking about before. And we'll cover this in more detail in our mining explainer. Some other cryptocurrencies use proof of stake, which allocates editing privileges to those who've staked some of their wealth on the integrity of the blockchain. Either way, this process makes it extremely costly for a fraudster to mount a successful attack that would fool a majority of the network. In order to succeed, they'd have to invest in just way too much computer equipment and energy. Basically, it would cost an attacker more than it'd be worth. And because it's majority rules, the more nodes on the network, the more secure the blockchain is. So if any one node goes rogue and edits their blockchain to give themselves more money, the network will just reject it. The distributed nature of the blockchain also means that there's no single point of failure. So if every node suddenly went offline except for one, except for my computer, the blockchain would keep working. The cryptocurrency would continue to exist, but it would be highly vulnerable to attack. Fraud is also disincentivized because these nodes are operated by the users of the cryptocurrency. It's in their own interest to act honestly and maintain the blockchain's integrity. If a bad actor somehow succeeded in attacking the network, it would undermine confidence in the cryptocurrency and devalue their potential loot. So there you have it. That's the blockchain in a nutshell. By now you can probably imagine the implications of such an innovation outside of crypto. As an unchangeable and transparent ledger, the blockchain has applications in finance, accounting, supply chain management, law, insurance, and just lots more. I'm gonna check on our Bitcoin node. Let's see how we're doing here. It's saying it's gonna take two days to download the rest of this. So I have a ways to go before I have a fully functioning node on my computer, but two days, that's not so bad for 13 years of transactions. Now, this video is part of a series of explainers diving into the fundamentals of crypto. If you haven't seen it yet, you might wanna check out our previous video, which was a general intro to what a cryptocurrency actually is. And stay tuned for our next video, where we'll jump into the crypto 
in cryptocurrency, and we'll learn all about proof of work and consensus mechanisms. It's actually really interesting. So thanks for watching. Uh, as always, if you liked what you saw, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and, uh, and we'll see you next time.